Good. We have uh, now we've got a race coming up. Is that right? Just yeah, Yarrick Lynn. They're just squaring up right now. Squaring up. I have with me the secretary manager of the Canberra Harness Club, John Platt. So, uh, John, welcome to Triple F. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Yeah, it's um, been a very great day, and it. So. It certainly have. You've got a bumper crowd out here for the cup, and of course, 14 horses engaged in this year's cup. It should be a really good race. Uh, have you got a tip for the listeners? Uh, yeah, Paul. I, I think the uh, horse it should go very well, and as the horse number four, Ron Bet. Uh, I just think um, the front line will suit him, and I just think and these other danger maybe is Frosty's horse are uh, very tricky. But I think for the listeners out there, I think Ron Bet. Okay, we'll have to leave it there, guys. So off Chalet, again, led by meter. The Carry Hanover second. The Edelombo third. Back uh, out to uh, Paul Langham. Thanks very much, Jeff. Yes, as I said uh, before that Yarra Glen race, we've got John Platts with us. John's given us his selections for the Cup. John, you must be happy with this crowd. Uh, I can't remember a bigger one here. Yeah, Paul, it's uh, very good and, uh, to see all these people turn up. And, yeah, I think this will be one of our biggest crowd for a while. Um, and it's, it's our biggest meeting of the season, so... You know, I hope to get these sort of crowds all the time. Um, but it's, I think the weather's helped a, a big part of it too, Paul. And, um, you know, it's, it's just great to see everybody here. Yeah, not again. I suppose it helps not being against a uh, football match or anything. As you said, the weather and uh, the fact there's a big field for the uh, Cup must bring people out to see what should be a fascinating clash of the 14 of them. Yeah, well, this is the first time we've had 14 in the Cup and it's just great to have a standing start uh, with this sort of uh, type of horse. And... Um, it brings people, and like you said, cross the fingers that we haven't clashed with the Raiders or a, you know, luckily the Brumbies were on last night. And just the other thing, like the, the weather, the weather this time of the year, and it's, you, know, you couldn't ask for anything better. Everything's gone right, and I'm sure it will in the Cup too with a, a great field coming up. We look forward to the Cup. John, thanks for joining us, and congratulations to you and all the committee. I know they worked very hard to promote this meeting, and uh, you know, you've done very well. The crowd's here to watch it. Let's hope it's a great race. Yeah, thanks a lot, Paul. Thanks very much, Jeff. We'll hand it back to you in the studio. OK, Paul Langham out there at the, uh, the, uh, at the Harness. Uh, Totes race 7 at Seymour, 3, 11 and 6. 3, the winner. Springtime boy paid 6.50, the winner. Now, Canberra race uh, number 6, the Carlton Canberra Cup, over 2,540. And there's a few chances here. Wrong bets at $7.80. Pre-eminence at $9.80. Pre-eminence is off 10 metres. In fact, uh, horses 7 through to 13 are handicapped with 10 metres and Kyburn Strike is the only one off 15 metres. Pre-eminence 9.80 here. Stormbro at $6.30. Sense and they're about to move up for race number six. Tapes are across 520, very tricky, and Kyber and Striker at seven dollars and sixty cents. Main race of the day. I think Red Sea won this race about two years ago. He was a very classy type. I'm uh, not sure what happened to him, but uh, he won at Canberra at the Canberra Cup a few years ago for the yep. Cup. And let's take you to uh, David Steele. Dave, they usually get a couple of good horses here. Who are some others that have uh, won it in previous years? Yes, thanks, uh, Matthew. As I was saying, uh, Brian Hancock's won three of them, uh, actually, with... Uh, now, I'm going on memory here, but Bundanoon won a Canberra Pacing Cup for Brian. He won it with uh, Will Adios and also Thorate, uh, an Inter-Dominion winner. So we have had some star attractions, you could say, taking this race out. But this year, it's a very even field and uh, evidenced by the uh, tote market with a favourite at about 9 to 2, $5.70 is number 11, very tricky. And they are moving in. So the field for the uh, 1997 Canberra Pacing Cup are uh, getting ready. Won't be long. Low burner off the front there with Artie's boy, Royal Shane. Wrong bet, one of uh, two runners for Greg Lewis. Deceitful normally gets away well from the stand. Kentucky Bourbon's there. We've got Copper Hahn, very tricky, off 10 metres with Stormbro. Love you, dear. And the back marker, the unplaced runner in uh, this year's Chariots of Fire, Kybe and Stryker. It's a quality field. Last year, the cup was won by Just Baz, Glenn Frost. So he's looking for a double here with uh, Very Tricky. And they're just about set now. Strand coming across for the 10-metre runners. 14 of them. So there's a lot of traffic. For the uh, back markers to get past, they're just about set. Stand by. 
1997 Canberra Pacing Cup and away they go. And from the pole, low burner has uh, missed the start rather badly. Getting away quickly, Kentucky Bourbon out wide. Going with it, wrong bet. And Greg Lewis keen to hang on to the lead in the cup on wrong bet. Artie's boys got away well and look at very tricky. He's got through the field very quickly. Frost on very tricky. Then Hetty Skipper the mare over uh, Stormbro getting going quickly. The right place is away well going three wide. He's going forward. Then low burner very slow away from the pole. Copper Hahn is well back in front of it Royal Shane and the uh, ones that are stringing back towards last are Deceitful who was slow away and Kybe and Stryker. Love You Dear is further back and last of all is uh, the local favourite preeminence. So plenty of ground between first and last as they get to the uh, bottom turn. More than two and a half laps to run and Wrong Bet shows the way. Wrong Bet shows the way on his back Kentucky Bourbon. Now very tricky. is reluctant to give the death away so the right place is having no luck in the first lap. He's posted three wide in the centre. Stormbro getting a nice run. Then Hetty Skipper buried away three back the rail. Artie's boy in the running line. By golly, the right place has had no luck. He'll have to go back to last. Copper Hahn in front of him now in the centre. Uh, he's covering up low burner. Then Kybe and Stryker, who's got past four or five of them. Deceitful is uh, fourth last over Royal Shane. Then Love You Dear. The right place had no luck. He had to go back to second last. And preeminence last of all. No sectionals working here in the cup, but Wrong Vet does it reasonably well. A lap and three quarters out. Very tricky. He's only two and a half metres away second. Here's one out uh, wide, Copper Hahn making a run at the lap and a half mark. Stormbro nicely placed in the 1-1, then Kentucky Bourbon. Now Kybe and Strikers come out three wide to get onto the back of Copper Hahn. He's getting a real good run into the race. Behind the Marty's boy, Hetty Skipper is strung up in traffic. Behind them, Deceitful over Low Burner the Mayor. Fourth last, Royal Shane, then Love You Dear the Grey. The right place has got a huge task, second last, and last of all, preeminence. But around the corner, 950 out now in the Canberra Cup, the first quarter, 31.9, and Kybe and Striker, the back marker, has come from last and he's in front. So Kybe and Striker now, 8.50 out, Baxter takes him to the front, heads off, wrong bet now, second. Third is Copper Hahn under a loose rein, but battling on. Very tricky is midfield outside of Kentucky Bourbon, then Stormbro. Stormbro's had a pretty good run on the race over Hetty Skipper. Artie's boy next, low burner, the right place. Then Deceitful, second last preeminence, Royal Shane last of all, but down the back, and Kybe and striker 650 out he's saying catch me if you can and at the moment he's well clear by two lengths moving into second we've got copper Hahn out after the leader then stormbro running on well beaten wrong bet heady skipper the mare coming into it then kentucky bourbon and running on reasonably arty's boy but leaving the back straight in 30.6 and kobe and striker at the moment he's four or five meters in front battling on pretty well at the moment copper Hahn uh getting to uh, second out wide is uh, stormbro and heady skipper running on well the mare but a around the corner. Kybe and Stryker, he's under some pressure now. The Mayor, Hetty Skipper's coming out after it. Copper Hunt's still there and so Stormbro. Kybe and Stryker though, halfway down. Hetty Skipper's having a crack at him. The Mayor, Hetty Skipper's going to take out the Canberra Cup and Hetty Skipper, great drive. Hetty Skipper wins it. Kybe and Stryker second. Stormbro third over Artie's boy. Then Copper Hunt close up over Love You Dear. Deceitful, low burner, preeminent. Now, we've seen the Canberra Cup. Tony Lewis, the winning driver of the six-year-old mare, a veteran of 93 starts. Hetty Skipper has taken the Canberra Cup. She's won 27 wins in uh, 27 races, including today's main event. 11.73.30, for Kai Bean, Stryker and Stormbro, $2.70. As David said prior to the race, some good ones have won it and uh, gone on to bigger and better things. Thor Eight and Bunda Noon went on to greatness. And here we have Tony Lewis, the winning driver of the six-year-old mare, Hetty Skipper, winning this afternoon's Canberra Cup. Cup. In the placings, Kai B and Stryker, and third was Stormbro. And that's the story of the Canberra Cup. Now, next, uh, Sandown Totes on the previous race there, which was race number six on the card, won by 10, Thong Yutai, 1760. And Yarra Glen, race six, major... <laughs> the Warren Jockey Club is the one they have to beat. Late mail from Rod, number five, Native Century... Race nine, number five, is the Sky Late Mail at Seymour. If you missed the Canberra Cup, it was won by Hetty Skipper. It's time for race seven, which is the uh, 10 capital pace. And here's David. Thanks a lot, Matthew. They're uh, moving in now. Maxton Full Speed, the uh, tote favourite. Punter's uh, hoping he can lead. As the gate comes towards the uh, corner now, this is race seven on Cup Day. A nice line. 
Hello, now Maxton Full Speed's galloped. It's a false start. The uh, favourite, just as the uh, starter was about to let them go, he galloped and fell back onto life's reward. And uh, as such, uh, Matthew, unfortunately, we've got a false start, the first try, race seven. Mm, we've seen a few of those this afternoon all over the place. There's another one, a false start at Canberra to the first attempt of race number seven. So that'll be another two minutes or so before they're... Uh Call. Yeah. We've got time for a full replay. Let's pick up David's call. And down on the inside, Maxton full speed got away quickly. Always in troubles, come out in a hurry. And so has Accelerant. Now, uh, Maxton full speed's going to get headed off here. We're always in trouble. The uh, first to find the inside, Accelerant's gone up to challenge. Maxton full speed back to third. Life's reward away quickly as there's a bit of a battle on up front. Bella success midfield over uh, Classy JJ, then Allwood's half. Back to the inside is uh, Mariah Khan, the last pair, Mike's trick, and move on gold. A lap and a half out now, they settle down in front. We're always in trouble, retain the lead. Accelerant is second, outside the leader. Baxton full speed behind the leader, and Life's Rewards got into the 1-1. Trailing it along, Bella Success racing one off solo. Uh, saving ground on the inside there, Mariah Khan. Bella Success is next. Now move on gold is uh, getting to third last now as he rails through on the inside. Trailing him up is Mike Strick, and last of all, Arwood's half. 30.4 the first quarter. Pace has been pretty brisk here at the 900, top of the lane, and always in trouble. Not in trouble at the moment, leading a couple of metres. The Wagga Horse Accelerant is second. Maxton full speed third at the moment, needs a run, and Life's Reward well placed. He is 1-1 uh, at the moment. He's covering up Mariah Khan. Bella Success, three back the outside. Then move on, Gold, who's fourth last. The inside of Classy JJ in the last pair as they run to the back after the bell. Mike's trick and Allwood's half. Second quarter, 32.4. Always in trouble, got a bit of a breather there. He leads only a metre. Accelerant moves up to put some pressure on him. Third, Maxton, full speed, travelling well, needs a run. Ditto for life's reward. He's in the 1-1, one, one. then Mariah Khan. Bella Success peeled out three wide now. Here come the runs from the back. Uh, taking off Classy JJ, coming one off, move on goal. Further back, Mike's trick. Always in trouble now, is beaten as they lead the back straight in 30.8. And life's reward reached a uh, narrow lead. Out wide, Classy JJ gets the second. Still there, always in trouble. Getting into the Clear now, Maxton, full speed. Uh, Mariah Khan is next, but around the corner. And Life's Reward, a narrow leader, but he's under the whip. Always in trouble there on the inside. Classy JJ trying to lay it down to the leader. And wider out, Maxton, full speed. Life's Reward in front. Classy JJ's just about got it, though. Coming at the Maxton, full speed. Classy JJ, Maxton, full speed. And Maxton, Maxton, full speed. The driver has a look at the crowd. He gets up, scores a metre to Classy JJ. Life's Reward third. That's the replay of Canberra Race 7, Maxton Full Speed, the winner, 320 and 150. 260 Classy JJ, life's reward at $2.10, 187, and we should have the full list of totes on that race fairly soon. Yarra Glen Race 7 coming up in two minutes, Minuet at $2.80. Ted uh, Demler driving Minuet, he's already had a double today, and another favourite sure. race from Canberra is coming up in a moment or two. $10 for Crown Reserve, Bow Trick at $4.20, Matong Explorer 19, Jerry Eagle $2.10, Tricks Half 11 and 17 for Miss Copper Bella and on the port. That's the rundown for race eight. Jerry Eagle, the favourite, and the Melbourne Bitter Pace at Canberra is coming up fairly soon. And they're at the start. Uh, the cup was won by heady skipper Tony Lewis. Now at Warwick Nabil, Rod Gallegos's tip in the last is for Corombi, number two. Race eight, number two is the Sky Channel late mail. It's second up from a spell today. Twelve for Mr Dowie, Corombi 6.30, Fulmanite $11, Centennial Court 10, Razor Riot 17, Wavering 15, Wisteria Walk 5.30, Rare and Cool at $5.60. Coming into the last at Warwick Nabil, it's due in four. Palawan 10, 16 drive in, 12 stately power and 32 scarlet orbit. Now the tips from uh, Adam. He likes Corombi too. Rod was very impressed with the horse's first up run. Rare and cool wisteria walk. Two, ten and nine. That's for Warwick Nabil, a class one over 1,100 metres. Now, Canberra, race number eight. Here's David. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Uh, they are moving up here for race eight. And uh, Jerry Eagle, a star uh, two-year-old and uh, not a bad three-year-old leader, but he hasn't raced for three months, but uh, he's the uh, one the putters want. Now, they're moving up. Jerry Eagle, we haven't seen him for uh, some time, this Goulburn trained uh, three-year-old. They do move up well. The start imminent, race eight, 
is set, racing now. Brewing at night showed no speed out of the gate. Bowtrick did though, he hummed out. And Bowtrick finds the lead easily. Jerry Eagle from six is coming across quickly. Uh, a little bit of tightening there on the first corner. Crown reserve to third. Now Brewing at night's down. Just went down on his nose, Brewing at night. And Frosty Ambitions come to grief too. So there's two uh, have come to uh, grief there with uh, Frosty Ambition and uh, also the other one that uh, fell coming to grief. Uh, they're the main two affected. And meanwhile, Bowtrick is uh, the front runner. Jerry Eagle gets to second behind the leader now. Crown Reserve is third, fourth, Matong Explorer. Then Tricks Half and Smooth Cloud. They're effectively the only other runners left in the race. Uh, on the port is uh, tailed off. And the other pair, uh, Miss Copperbella, Frosty Ambition, are, uh, of course, out of the race. So we'll concentrate on the one in front. And uh, that is Bowtrick. Bowtrick shows the way. Of course, a horse is down on the track here now, leaving the back straight. But at the moment, Bowtrick trick the leader Jerry Eagle behind him second crown reserve third fourth tricks half Matong Explorer racing without cover smooth cloud on its back and uh, tail right off is uh, on the port the only other runner who's uh, in any sort of contention well they come towards this uh, incident here I think they've got the fallen horse under control and bow trick switches wide here to avoid the trouble he shows the way by four meters to Jerry Eagle they've all got round him uh, fairly although crown reserve now has gone into a break so it's a mix-up old race at the 950 now race 8 Canberra and Bowtrick out of all the trouble leads by 4 metres to the favourite Jerry Eagle getting to third now tricks half on the inside of Matong Explorer and the only other runner in it really smooth cloud tailed off our crown reserve and on the port 850 out the quarter in 33.1 and Bowtrick shows the way Jerry Eagle comes off the inside there he put in a wrong in there for a moment the favourite but he's down again now and the second quarter left behind in 33 where Bowtrick goes to the back leads by 5 or six metres to Jerry Trick, Trick's half is third, Matong Explorer fourth. Now uh, the race has been called off, I've just been informed. The race has been called off. So uh, what a sensation here in race eight with the uh, fall occurring uh, as they leave the home straight on the side of the track. It was uh, just trying to remember, Frosty Ambition copped the, the backwash. From memory it was uh, Miss Copper Bella uh, or maybe brewing at night that seemed to go down on his nose, brewing at night. And uh, Miss Copper Bella was the uh, one that went right over the top uh, and Frosty Ambition copped the backwash as well. So uh, no doubt our Sky Channel pictures have picked up this incident, but uh, Roger Neighbour, the chief steward, has decided to uh, call this one off. Obviously, uh, things just far too precarious. Uh, all right, a bit of a schmozzle there with race eight at Canberra. One thing's for sure, they won't rerun it. It'll just be a no race. They've, uh, they've gone far too far, those horses, to rerun the race. So if you had a bet in race eight at Canberra, money back. Mr Dowie, 12 at Warwick Nabil, 310 Corombi, 12 for Fulmanite, 13 Centennial Court. Wisteria Walk, 640 and Rare and Cool at $5.90 for race eight at Warwick Nabil. Uh, $10 there for Palo Ann. Stately Power's the only other one. Where all the horses and drivers A-OK -okay there at Canberra. No reason for concern there, although I'd say a few scratches and bruises. I, I think they, if they do rerun it, that one won't be uh, going around. Or a few of those. There'll be a few late scratchings anyway. Um, we'll keep you posted on that. Um, the fate of race eight at Canberra. But Seymour race 10, Shemwood $2.90. Uh, race eight, the previous event race eight is going to be rerun at 5.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There are four late scratchings. Brewing at night, number one. Frosty Ambition, number seven. Tricks Half, number eight. Miss Copper Bella, number nine. One, seven, eight, nine. So we're going to have the running of race eight after race nine, 5.20 for the running of race eight. Time for the ninth. And here's David. Thanks a lot, Matthew. They are uh, moving up now for the uh, ninth, which is actually the second last. Racing, there's the blue light and Turbo Tomkins not the best to get going. Kybe and Vicks got away quickly, so Sheen Topper. And oh, gone into a gallop, Sheen Topper uh, got down but went roughly. Out wide, Nippy Rancio going quickly as Sheen Topper's rough in his gear. My distraction getting through the field quickly. Well back, Dynamite Jack, Ragtime Charlie and Tambara Glen. Well on settling and Kybe and Vic the leader now, Nippy Rancio second. Turbo Tomkins third as Sheen Topper uh, gets going again. He went roughly on that corner again. My distraction getting through the field into 
the 1-1. One, one. Then Ragtime Charlie, Dynamite Jack and Tambara Glen. Well, down the straight, they've got more than two to run. And in front, Kybe and Vic again, Sheen Topper gets going. He moves to the breeze. Nippy Rancio third inside of Turbo Tompkins, now 1-1. One, one. My distraction on his back, then Crescendo. She's uh, three back the inside. The next pair are Ragtime Charlie, Dynamite Jack and Tambara Glen is last of all. Kybe and Vic, the front runner, as they head down the back, more than a lap and a half to run now. He uh, shows the way and he's clear by uh, a couple of metres to uh, moving up on the outside is uh, one obscured at the moment. Sheen Topper, of course it is. He level pegs now, Sheen Topper, as my distraction comes out of the uh, midfield position to race up three wide to join them. Turbo Tompkins in the running line outside of Nippy Rancio. Further back to Dynamite Jack over Crescendo, Ragtime Charlie, and last of all is Tambara Glen. 31-6 the quarter. Bit of action on here mid-race where Kybe and Vic the leader. Sheen Topper wouldn't give the death away. My distractions posted three wide as they square up for the bell. Nippy Rancio behind the leader. Then Turbo Tompkins in the centre covering Crescendo. Dynamite Jack's had a pretty good run. Third last over Ragtime Charlie. Last of all, Tambara Glen. Second quarter left behind them in 31.5. And showing the way Kybe and Vic. Sheen Topper's done plenty of work. He's second two metres away. My distractions still out in no person's land. Uh, fourth and fifth out three wide. Turbo Tompkins splitting him in the centre. Nippy Rancio behind the lead, then Crescendo. Dynamite Jack's going to hop onto the back of my distraction. Ragtime Charlie and Tambara Glen last of all. Halfway down the back straight though, and Kybe and Vic is uh, under pressure as Sheen Topper gets to him and appears to be going better. Still my distraction out, three wide grinds on. Dynamite Jack about to peel off his back and come into the race. Behind them, Turbo Tompkins and Nippy Rancio. Crescendo getting through the centre, leaving the back in 32.9 and getting to the front now is is, uh, my distraction. It's been an enormous run, but here's Dynamite Jack. He's had the fresh uh, run. Wide around Crescendo coming into it too, dropping out of it. Sheen Topper in the straight. My distraction under pressure. Dynamite Jack's nearly got him, and the mare Crescendo is running on strongly. Crescendo's hit the lead out wide. Perfect drive, and Crescendo's going to come away and win it. Second, my distraction, a giant run. Third, Dynamite Jack. Then Turbo Tompkins, Ragtime Charlie. Nippy Rancio weakened over Tambara Glen, Kybe and Vic, and the erratic Sheen Topper is last of all. Number five, Crescendo, eight dollars sixty and one ninety seven. My distraction, one thirty. Dynamite Jack, one dollar ninety five seven and six. And that's race number nine from Canberra, with still race eight to be run, and it's going to be run in twenty minutes time. Now, Globe Derby dividends are ready on the last event, race eight. Number one, any tougher, four dollars sixty one sixty four the place. Seven, Kurt, one eighty and four, Master Mazda, two fifty. The Quinella paid $21.50 and the Trifecta $192.90 on race 8. 1, 7 and 4 were the placings on the last event at Globe Derby and it is all clear there. That <laughs> As we uh, move up well, Jerry Trick favourite for this uh, rerun. And uh, a nice line here, they're about to go. This is the last Canberra. They're set on Cup Day. Racing now, there's the blue light. And once again, we uh, get race eight. And this is what happened the first time. Bow Trick showing good gate speed for David Hewitt. And uh, would you believe it? Jerry Eagle, as he did at the first attempt, has uh, begun well to get to second. He'll sit in behind the leader at the moment as Crown Reserve is third. Smooth Cloud, the first to race without cover, fourth. On the port is fifth on the inside, and Matong Explorer is uh, dragged back to last. Well, it's almost a replica at the moment this far from home as they come to the top of the straight with two to run, or a bit more than that. And Bow Trick shows the way for Dave Hewitt. Uh, Jerry Eagle uh, settling nicely in behind now, the three-year-old. Crown Reserve is third, and Smooth Cloud fourth. They really string out now Indian file the order on the port is fifth and second last and last of all is uh, Matong Explorer they go past the judge now a leisurely lead time of 42.4 and showing the way Bow Trick Jerry Eagle's got a lovely drop on the leader second Crown Reserve third 
Then Smooth Eagle fourth as they go to the back straight. A lap and three quarters out on the port is uh, second last and last of all still Matong Explorer. So a boring old affair really. Not much change in the order. And Bowtrick doing it at his leisure. Jerry Eagle not happy with the speed now and Dennis Day has come off the inside and he's really attacking Bowtrick and they go together. They've broken the field up now. Crown Reserve next over Smooth Cloud. On the port losing touch when they sprinted and the same applies to Matong Explorer. Well 34-2 the uh, first quarter. I'd say they go a lot quicker though for the second and Jerry Eagle takes over. As they come to the 9.50, now he headed off Bow Trek when uh, Day wasn't happy with the speed. Smooth Cloud making up some ground now gets to third over Crown Reserve. On the port second last, a Matong Explorer is uh, going badly. He's lost touch with the field. As they race down the straight now, 8.50 to run and uh, the second quarter will be interesting. It'll sure to be quicker. 29.8 they went when Jerry Eagle broke the field up and he heads to the back straight now at the 7.50. Does Jerry a leader by four metres to Smooth Cloud who's now got Bow Trick in the pocket. Crown Reserves come off the inside to trail Smooth Cloud forward. On the port second last, a Matong Explorer racing below his best is uh, tailed off last as they go down the back. Between the far turns, Jerry Eagle doing it well, leads a couple of metres to Smooth Eagle to Smooth Cloud who's on a loose rein. Bow Trick's got nowhere to go. Crown Reserve about to peel three wide. Trying to get onto its back on the port and now Matong Explorer warming up but they leave the back straight in 30.7 and Jerry Eagle's got them struggling. Bow Trick gets to second. Looks the only conceivable danger. Out of uh, Petrol Smooth Cloud, then Crown Reserve and Matong Explorer, but around the corner a race in two. Jerry Eagle showing the way. Bow Trick having a crack at him. How will Jerry's condition be at the moment? He's holding Bow Trick at bay. Bow Trick having a bit of a crack at him, but I think Jerry will hang on. Jerry Eagle in front. Bow Trick diving, but Jerry, welcome back. Jerry Eagle wins it. A metre to uh, Bow Trick. Now Matong Explorer flew for third. Not a bad run. Crown Reserve fourth over Smooth Cloud and on the port is last after an eventful race eight. So there it is, uh, Jerry Eagle holding on uh, too strongly to uh, resist the challenge of uh, Bow Trick. Dennis Day seized the initiative uh, mid-race when he uh, came off the inside to race round Bow Trick and uh, despite his lack of uh, recent racing, Jerry Eagle has been uh, too good in the last, holding Bow Trick at bay and uh, getting up for third, but a uh, fair way off them, number five, Matong Explorer. So those numbers will be on the last six, Jerry Eagle, four, Bow Trick, and uh, five, uh, Matong Explorer. They've gone 247 in the last as it flashes up on the uh, infield semaphore in a last quarter of uh, 29.8. So it was very, very leisurely early on in the race, but Dennis Day changed all that when he uh, attacked Bow Trick mid-race to take over. And in the end, he's been just a little bit too good. Uh, his mile rate only moderate at uh, 25.6. But that's the, uh, the last at Canberra on an eventful uh, Canberra Cup day.